I don't think movies have been too bad this year, not too shabby. There's been plenty of good films to come out, and I think the horror department, more than any, is really shining. And that does not change with the new film I'm talking about today, The Substance. In fact, this might be my favorite horror of the year so far. Let's talk about it in a spoiler-free review. Demi Moore. Demi Moore? Demi Moore? I've never really learned how to say that correctly. I'm a movie critic. Subscribe. Uh, she has it all in this film. And probably in real life as well. Elizabeth Sparkle is her character. She's got the looks. She has the money. She has the fame. She has the aging, graceful departure from her job because she is phased out now. She's too old. She's dust. She's cobwebs. She's ghost. Get her out. Her boss, Dennis Quaid, plays Harvey. He's a douchebag, and he kind of reminded me of David Pumpkins from that SNL skit. Dennis Quaid's hilarious in this film in the most obnoxious, prickish manner possible. He thinks that they need to go younger. That's what audiences want. That's what the people at home want to see. And unfortunately, Elizabeth Sparkle doesn't have a way to de-age herself. Or does she? The premise is simple in a weird, complex way. <laughs> Elizabeth Sparkle has nothing if she doesn't have name recognition and her face in front of the cameras for millions of adoring fans to worship. So she's looking for an out. She's looking for a fix to get her back into her prime again so she can continue doing what she loves doing most. As luck would have it, that falls right into her lap in the form of a mysterious drug called The Substance. I could go into further detail, but I really don't want to because I went into this movie cold. Did not see a trailer. I actually thought, <laughs> I actually thought this movie was called Demi Moore. I saw a poster and it just said in big letters, Demi Moore. I'm just going to say her name different every time. Demi Moore. And I was like, oh, did, is she making a movie about herself? Is this a documentary, a, a biopic of sorts? No, that was just one of the posters that featured her prominently. Uh, it's called The Substance. She takes a drug. It does something absolutely insane. And then the wheels are off for the rest of the film. I love this movie. It's two hours and 20 minutes. Yes, it's a little longer than it needs to be. Yes, this, this director, uh, a French director I've never heard of. She has a fancy name. I'm going to butcher it if I even attempt to say it. Um, definitely keep my eye on her in the future. Because she freaking nailed this movie. And she apparently really likes asses. She's got, a, she's got a fetish and it's on full display. Lots of nudity. Whole bunch of nudity. Mainly from Moore and her co-star, Margaret Qualley. The last movie I saw Margaret Qualley in was Drive Away Dykes. That movie was atrociously bad. I dare you to enjoy that film. Almost unwatchable in my opinion. I did like her in it though. And here, she shines. She's, she's fantastic. Not as good as Demi Moore though. I haven't seen D Moore in a long ass time. I think the last time was Charlie's Angels Full Throttle where she was the villain. In one of those movies, I don't know which one. She's so good in this. This might be her best acting performance to date. G.I. Jane pulls out all the stops. She's essentially playing herself, which is always a very powerful thing to perform. Looking back on her many years as an A-list celebrity, to then watch the cracks show in front of the mirror as you look at yourself on full display, as others perceive you in the industry, it's sad. It's, it's honestly depressing. And I can understand why, as a female artist, as an actress, it would be so debilitating to be in that industry. And that's entirely what this movie's about. How female actresses are treated in the industry and how they're looking for a way to stay relevant, to compete with younger actresses that come out of the blue and completely replace you overnight. This is a very R-rated movie. There are many moments where you might want to turn away, cringing in disgust or in the, the pain of what's happening, but you gotta watch. You gotta keep the peepers open, looking forward, because this director is putting it all out there. All the nicks and scratches, all the bruising, all the scarring, and you should appreciate it, damn it. This is, I guess, what they would call a body horror film. Um, there's going to be a lot of physical alterations going on. Most of it's going to revolve, most of the fear is going to revolve around that kind of stuff. Just grossing you out, I guess. It even has, the, actually the grossest scene in the movie for me is when Dennis Quaid is eating shrimp. 
The camera's just up in his business, like he's chewing that stuff, it's gross, it's oozing out of his mouth, he's got a mess on the table, and I found it very disturbing. More so than, let's say, a body ripping out of another body sort of a thing. So yes, a lot of nudity, good amount of swearing, some very, very brutal, gory stuff going on in the last 20 or so minutes. This movie is completely off the deep end. No strings on me sort of a thing. It, that might be what uh, polarizes some of the audience and they'll go, um, I'm no longer on board with this. I was here and now I, I just don't think I can do it anymore. I freaking loved it from beginning to end. Really a journey, really an experience, one that continuously challenges you to keep watching and see where this crazy train heads to next. The music is bombastic. I actually thought my, I was concerned that the theater was gonna blow the speakers in that final act. The music just keeps ratcheting up. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, is it going to stop? Is it going to stop? Really getting you in the headspace of these characters. Now, some of the things Elizabeth Sparkle is able to do called into question. Very suspect. There's definitely some of that turn your brain off nonsense happening where characters are doing things that seem out of character, if that makes sense. I don't want I don't want to spoil things, but yeah, let's just say you got to go along with the ride. Otherwise, you'll probably get off early and just check out completely. Uh, there, there was a couple behind me. Probably not the best date movie, by the way. The woman afterwards turned to her boyfriend or husband and said, What the hell did you just take me to? <laughs> he seemed to enjoy it. This is the third or fourth movie, not to sound like a broken record, that feels like they really took inspiration from Stanley Kubrick. Not only do we have that iconic hallway shot going on, there's the bathroom scenes, there's the music. One song lifted straight out of Space Odyssey. It's very much mirroring what he did before. Which is cool to see. I appreciate it because I love Kubrick films. This, this just did a good job all around. Very well executed. Definitely check this one out. Let me know your thoughts though in the comments below. Have you seen it already? Were you planning on it? Have you never heard of it, but I maybe put this on your radar? Let me know. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. I post movie reviews about pretty much every film I can think of coming out, whether it's an animated film, whether it's something that's extreme that most critics won't touch, I'm there. I'm reviewing streaming garbage and letting you know my honest thoughts, and I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you really like what I'm doing, think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's different tier levels with different perks. I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm bitching up a storm about first world problems, hoping to make you laugh at my misery. And lastly, you can find this show on most platforms, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So, a lot of ways to find me, a lot of ways to support. I would appreciate it. Hopefully, I see you next time.